Jeremy Blum with a video for ultimatecomputers.net. Today we are going to walk through the basic steps of building a computer start to finish and we're going to talk about what you need to do to get ready for that and then how to actually go out and do it. First thing you want to do is start by opening the case so you can get ready and uh, put everything inside. So in this case we're using thumb screws for that, in some cases have a handle. So we've put the case on our side and we're ready to start working on it. The first thing we're going to do before we start working though is we want to grind ourselves. I'm using an anti-static mat. They come with an alligator clip. It's just clipped onto any metal part of your case and that will um, ground your workstation while you're working on it. This one also can plug into a grinding outlet on a standard wall uh, outlet. So I'm just going to plug that in right there for now. Let's clip that on. And then this also has a bracelet that you wear around your arm to protect yourself from static discharge. Um, if you just want to get a bracelet, you can just do that too. and ground yourself with the bracelet. They have those that plug into a grounding outlet or also just clip onto the case, but an anti-static mat is especially good if you're working on carpet. Since this case doesn't have a removable motherboard tray, we're going to install everything as much as we can on the motherboard first. So that'll be the uh, RAM, the CPU, and the CPU cooler, and then we'll get it inside the case. This is an uh, anti-static case that it comes in. Anti-static cases are, anti are static proof on the inside but not on the outside. So don't depend on resting your motherboard on this bag as you're grounding. Make sure you're doing it on, not on a carpet floor, and if you are doing it on a carpet floor like I am, use a mat like this or do it on a wood desk or something, or even do it on a piece of cardboard. So there's our motherboard, Mini ATX. This is our Intel Core 2 Dual Processor. It's the 6750, and this is what we're going to be using on our Mini ATX system today. So I'll open this up. It's factory sealed. It's your CPU. Sticker, very important. You have to apply the sticker, otherwise the computer won't work. Um, this is the stock heat sink. We're just going to use stock heat sink for the system. It's pretty basic, so that's what we'll use. And then the uh, CPU is down on the bottom here. You're going to lift the latch up here. This is a little different on Intel and AMD boards. On Intel boards, it's spring loaded. On it, AMD, it's just a little clip that you also pull up. Same, same idea, though. Uh, on AMD, there's no there's no cover that you lift up here. It just goes in, and then you latch back down. But until you lift this up, this can only go in one way, and it'll only fit in one way. You should not have to force this at all. If you look at the CPU very closely, you can see there's a little gold triangle in one of the corners. So now you can also see that there's a, an arrow in the silver on the uh, connection of the motherboard. So you want those to line up and be in the same, same corner. And the, the CPU is also notched, so it will only fit in one way. And it should just drop in without any force at all. So there you go. That's it. It just drops in. We close that, and now to latch it down, we push this back down. You have to apply a decent amount of force here, so don't be afraid of it, and then just latch it down. The Intel stock heats and are actually pretty good, um, and they come with thermal paste pre-applied. You can see that there's this um, these silver lines in the bottom here. That's thermal transfer paste. It's needed for any heat sink on top of any chip. It's what helps transfer the heat between the chip and the heat sink. So you can see the four holes here. These are just going to go into these four holes and latch down. So we'll put that down on top of the CPU very carefully. Try to line up the holes as best you can. Get everything in the holes. Uh, and you have to apply a decent amount of pressure, but you can see there's arrows on these that tell you which way to turn them. So you basically just push down, uh, depress the spring, and then turn them, and it'll do the rest for you. Now that we finally have this mounted, um, CPU fan has to plug in. Unlike the other fan headers, the CPU fan header has four pins instead of three. Um, because of the plastic on here, it will only go on one way. DDR2 RAM will only go on one way, and it's notched differently than DDR1 and DDR3 RAM, um, so that you can't put the wrong type of RAM in. You're just going to apply pressure to the top of it, and these pins should flip in automatically and clip the RAM in. Make sure it's in firmly, and you might want to press on these and just make sure that they're on all the way. Check from the side, make sure everything. Those things will flip up and latch, latch it in place. So now we have our RAM in. Before we put the motherboard in now, we have to install standoffs onto what we're mounting it on. Standoffs are these brass things that you can see here. Um, you just gotta look at your motherboard, see where the screw holes are in your motherboard, and then mount standoffs in the same holes in the case. This is the one that came in the case, but the one that came with our motherboard is different because the connections are different. So we gotta take this included one out and put ours in. So that just pops out through in there. Take that out. Make sure you get the orientation right. 
So bef the last thing we do before we put the motherboard in is we're going to attach these front panel headers to our Q connector that comes with the board. Not all boards comes with this, come with this, and a lot of boards you have to just plug in directly, but since we have it, we're going to use it before we go to the motherboard. It just makes it a little easier. These are your connections for your reset switch, your power switch, your hard drive LEDs, and your power LEDs. This thing's pretty well labeled, so we can just plug this in. Now we're going to put the motherboard in. So I'm going to the angle a little bit to get it in, but just be careful. I'm trying to scratch against too much stuff. And remember, we want to get this to fit in the IO shield in the back. We got to screw it in to each of the standoffs. Screw them on lightly at first, and then at the end, you'll tighten all of them. Make sure you use the, the screws designated for the motherboard that came with your case. There's first the motherboard headers that we attached the connector for before. Now that we have our motherboard headers attached, we're going to put in the optical drives and our, video, our uh, media card reader. So first we got to pop off these front plastic pieces just like that. And then there's usually a metal piece behind it. You basically just got to bend it back and forth a little bit until it kind of snaps out. The drive rails onto the uh, the optical drives and our media card drive. If you look over at our media card drive, uh, we have to first install the three and a half inch to five and a quarter inch drive bay adapter. Now that we have the uh, sliders attached and everything that allow tool-less installation, we're gonna slide these in toward their respective drive bays. They should just snap in nice and easy. Now we're going to slide our media card reader in, and we have our little adapter plate for that, and we'll just snap on right over it. Like that. It slides in, and just clips in nice and easy, just like that. And now this just slides right back in. Now we're going to put our PCI cards in, so that's our video card and our TV tuner for this computer. TV tuner card in, it just slides into our white PCI slot. Now we're going to install our video card, and this goes in our PCI Express slot, which is usually blue, or at least in this particular motherboard it is. So this will just slide in there. And that'll, that'll snap in PCI card, PCI Express cards lock in place. Now we're going to connect the SATA cables for our hard drives and our CD drives, both of which use SATA cables. Those just plug into the back of the device like that, and then into right into the motherboard. Now we're going to put the power supply in. This case is a little unusual. The power supply goes in the bottom. You want the, the fan facing the inside of the case, because this is uh, an intake fan, so it's taking hot air from the inside of the case, and it's exhausting it at the back. So we're going to put it in like this. Uh, there's anti-vibration grommets in here, so that'll prevent from making noise. So this will just slide in like this, and then that screws in from the back. Okay. Now we're plugging in um, the motherboard connectors, which is in this case is a four pin and twenty four pin. In some cases it's an eight pin and a twenty four pin. Also, our case has a, um, a fan speed controller that plugs into the motherboard, so that will plug into the one that's labeled power fan. That's plugged in. And then we have this big 24 one that also plugs in the motherboard right there. Plugging in the uh, SATA power cables for the hard drives and the CD drives. They just look like that. So now that we have all the power cables hooked up and we have our two fans connected to Molex power, um, we can put the side of the case back on, and we're all done and ready to power the system up.